13 on the shot clock. Williams will pull it back out again. The freshman from Marietta, California with a long range three. Oh, that was downtown. And again, the confidence. You make that shot, you make a nice pass. He's into the rhythm of the game. He is the key so far for the Providence College Friars. And 14 for 29 so far. Matthews down low for Barrow. He kicks it out, goes all the way back to Kubion. Working around the perimeter. James down low, and Barrow rejected. And a foul down low as we will step aside. It's an eight-point lead for Providence College on top 10 to 2. Providence with a fast start on top 10 to 2. Last year, the Fires were just 5 and 11 in Big East action. Tim Welsh knows they have to be better this season. Well, in order to be successful in the Big East this year, I think one thing has to happen is that we have to understand that at the end of games, we really have to tighten our defense up. Uh, we had a great offense last year. We were fourth in the league in points scored, but we we're at the bottom of the league in, in most defensive categories. I felt that we rebounded the ball pretty well last year. We played pretty aggressive, but we just didn't stop the basketball when we needed to get big stops. And, and understanding that you have to play 40 minutes of defense. And I, and I think our guys have shown so far this year that they're going to make the commitment. 10 to 2 Providence on top right now the early going has got a fast start Herbert Hill finds the mark and puts PC on top by 10 well the key early in this game Providence getting the ball up the court doing a nice job against pressure and effectively getting it inside where they have the advantage in this ball game a little tie up down low the possession arrow pointing towards Marquette where they'll keep the ball here 21 seconds remaining on the shot clock. We'll get a new shot clock here, the ball being inbounded. Dominic James, they stack it up and break out. Now this 2-3 zone, the matching up, really spreading out Marquette, should open up opportunities for James and Matthews and company from the perimeter. Kick it back out with 15 seconds on the shot clock and the rejection. Nicely done. Herbert Hill that time. 10 seconds on the clock now. And they hit. From the right side, Kubion. The Venezuelan able to hit. That's a big basket. Good defense by Providence. Shot clock under 10. Marquette struggling from the perimeter. Kubion just drains that shot. Kind of keeps Marquette within striking distance in the ballgame. Dermott cuts in, but he was fouled on the way in. Yeah, Dominic James fired up. Nice job by Hill to get out there, but also a nice job by Dan Fitzgerald. Stays with it. Nice dish. That's just good ball movement right there to skip it, get the three. Big basket. Kubion coming out. David at Kubion. Aaron Kai, Venezuela. Big Ray Hall into the ball game. So Tim Wells with different opportunities to stay very big. Tom Crean with a nice adjustment. He's gone to a 2-3 zone. A little less pressure on the backcourt. He's going to try to gum things up more, though, and sag on Providence's big people. McDermott down to Herbert Hill, who oh. finds some space. Didn't work there, though. Providence, another nice job penetrating. Near steal by Williams, though. James nicely to the basket, but his foul, Tim Welsh wants to know where and why. on Ray Hall, the foul, the freshman from Denver, Colorado, just checked into the game. Big physical presence. That time getting James, who's averaged 17 points this season. And 65% on the free throw line is James. Well, we showed James before the game. He's got a tremendous ability to penetrate. Tim Walsh thinking that Ray Hall had his hands up. However, James took it in there, created some activity and some contact. And more often than not, the big guy, just for sheer size sometimes, gets called for the foul. Dwayne Williams has done a pretty good job here in the early going so far for PC, bringing it up. I think this full game really has been excellent. I think the, you know, the key to the game is his ability to help drive and direct the effort. Almost had the uh, walk on that one. 
Efejuku for three. Yes. 17-7 BC lead. Efejuku, his first bucket of the game, a three-pointer. He's made the most threes coming into the game with 23 for Providence. And Efejuku, a guy that is very athletic, his solid play in this game will be critical for the Friars. 11 and 7 for 10 so far from the field. The shooting has been very accurate so far for PC in the early going. Down low, and Hill with another rejection. Rebound for Barrow. And Dominic James kicks it out for Matthews from the corner, a three pointer. Five points now for Wesley Matthews from Madison, Wisconsin. Really nice job by Dominic James that time to penetrate, dish. Williams hits his second three, and the freshman answers. He's got six big points for PC. Boy, is he making the most of his opportunity. Curry on the bench, but playing great all year. The freshman playing fearlessly and very solidly so far in this ballgame. The 10-point Providence College lead as Matthews cuts in, gets the roll nicely done. Seven points down for Wesley Matthews. Williams dishes off for Hall. Fujuku trying to set up the offense here, bringing Hall up to the top of the key. Hall off the hands. James takes over for Marquette. Marquette so far this season, 13-2 coming into tonight's action. Their first Big East contest. Rebound taken by McDermott for PC. All over him is Hayward and the foul. At least once. Providence College with a fast start. PC on top by eight. 11.42 left of the first half. Twenty to twelve, Providence on top here in the first half. Eleven forty-two left. Golf fans and club pros, it's not too early to start thinking about the 2007 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPN.com to register your team or to sign your course up as a qualifying site. Be part of the search for America's best twosome. Well, it's been a great start for Dwayne Williams, making his third consecutive start in the absence of Sherrod Curry. I think he's been very poised early. He's made a couple of threes, but more importantly, he's done a nice job getting the ball off the floor, getting it to the right people in Providence, and their shot selection has been very good, and they've, they've really used their size advantage well, and they've made some outside shots. Shot it very well to start this game. Williams brings it up. As PC last year, just 5-11 in Big East play, trying to get their first conference win of the season as Hall couldn't grab the handle, and Tim Welsh fired up. He's, got, he's had a great start. You don't want to see it go away. You've got to catch that ball. You say, come on, let's execute, guys. Turnovers can be real killers. And Marquette, a disciplined, patient team, will keep coming at the Friars. This definitely has the make for a very good ball game here tonight in Providence. We see fresh off their 107-69 win in their first ever matchup against Longwood. They had six players in double figures on the floor now, battling and coming away that time is Charles Birch. The way ball went down, he went after the big fella. That's good hustle, doesn't show up in the box score, but that was a good play. Help the Friars get it. German down low to Hall, he spins on Lott, goes up, hits the iron. Looks like he lost his balance after the spin move. Sets up up top. He has been quiet so far here in the early going. Games held to just two points. Matthews gets free and the foul. As that time, the foul on Jeff McDermott. Jonathan Colley will check back in here for PC. And Ray Hall will sit down. As Colley comes back in. Jonathan Colley from Mattapan, Massachusetts, had a career high 18 points in the last game against Longwood. Only part of the big sophomore connection this year for Providence. He plays with great energy. I really think he's given the team a consistent lift off the bench. As James a little off early in this one from downtown. Williams stops and pops from three. He hit two previous threes. That time can't get it to go. And uh, they're trying to calm him down here a little bit as he's all fired up. Felt uh, the groove going there, but that time off the mark and a quick trip down the floor for PC. Something they want to stay away from. Yeah, not a good decision that time. Patience, 
get the ball down. First job for him is run the team. Fitzgerald now in the game for Marquette from the far side. This is Kubi on the rebound for McDermott. Out ahead to Epijuku, off to Williams. Timeout for the Golden Eagles. It's a 10-point Providence College Friars lead. Beautifully run, fast break. Check it out. This is textbook right here. McDermott, Epijuku takes it to the middle, draws the defense. Very little dribbling, and Williams with the finish. Rebound, outlet, take it to the middle, fill the lanes. Bounce pass finish. That is textbook. Beautifully done. And Tom Crean saying early in this one, you know, Providence really taking it to us, guys. Got to get back on defense. Got to do a better job on the boards and get some stops. It's all about defense right now for Marquette and for Providence. Keep playing hard, work it, and take good shots at the offensive end. They're doing a good job on the boards. LPC opening up their Big East schedule here tonight. First time they've opened at home since 2000. Last win in a Big East opener was 2003 for Boston College. They won or for Providence College. They beat BC 93-80 to at Connie Forum. And last year losing their Big East opener to Georgetown. Yeah, huge win. Last time out, 107 wins for PC. I tell you what, the Big East this year, top to bottom, should be so competitive. Everybody's going to get after each other. You've got to do well at home. You've got to compete every night out in this league. After Juku gets the contact, but can't get it to go. He's driven to the floor. Amy, very hard on the play. Juku's been big for Providence College in his sophomore year out of Fresh Meadows, New York. Juku going to the line. Look at his season numbers. I mean, he's really put up, he's really improved. You know, he's put up the numbers. He's better than 15 a game. The big thing you're looking for with Juku is consistency because he's got all the tools that could be a guy that really lifts this team to the next level. 78% from the line hits them both. With five points here in the first half for PC. Dominic James, who has been held to just two points so far. Largest lead of the game right now for PC on top. Knights weld as they lose and another turnover here for Marquette. Marquette really struggling against this 2-3 zone. We're going to see more man-to-man -man and more pressure, but the zone bothering them in Marquette Struggling early in this ball game, now midway through the first half, shooting the ball. Birch inside to McDermott, who turns and misses off the side end. Rebound taken by Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald sort of started a couple games earlier this season, was uh, cutting in and fouled on the way in. The time was Lazar Hayward. Charles Birch and the foul on Birch. Well, James, even if you're not shooting it real well, the penetrator makes things happen for his teammates. That was a, a, a pass that should have led to a layup, but a beautiful, beautiful look inside. He's got great vision, and he's so quick getting into the lane. They were at his 57% from the foul line. Hits the first one. Herbert Hill comes back in. Jeff McDermott steps out. Zar Hayward getting ready for his second shot. He led Marquette in rebounding three of the last four games. And freshman six foot six forward from Buffalo, New York. Able to get them both. And a ten, foot, ten point game here again with the Friars on top. See, to me, this is where Williams has really been solid in the first half. Just get the ball up the court. Be solid, get it, get the rotation going. Man to man right now by Marquette. Williams cuts in, back for Herbert Hill. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Birch for Hill. Six now, Zepajuku trying to fry and friends, gets it back from Hill. Turns and loses the ball, goes out of bounds, and it'll go the other way. As shot time clock runs out on the shot clock. Good defense that time by Marquette. They really bore down, forced Providence out of their set. That's a very good defensive effort. We're at the Beckham Donut Center in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm Don Orsillo along with Ron Perry and Shauna Hassett. It's the 21st rank Marquette Golden Eagles and the Providence College Friars. 
Kusu took a long time setting that up. Never did get anything off. If Juco kind of flailing to get it away, but time runs out. And, and, and Tom Creed's club really bore down on defense. That's what they need to do. Get back in the ball game. Providence has really started out fast. But one of the keys in this league is so much ability out there is you've got to just sustain that high level of play or else your opponent, in this case for Providence, Marquette, get themselves right back in the game. You mentioned Marquette 13-2 so far in the non-conference games. There is a big basket down low that time for Hayward. Nice drop for Hayward. <laughs> right to the goal, didn't he? Left a few bodies in his path. I think Collie ended up on the on the hardwood physical game. Marquette's played 12 home games so far in the non-conference games. A lot of home games. This one thrown away. And it's going the other way for Marquette. Turnover for PC. That's right. And then you go on the road, tested like this, and it's a tough adjustment. PC with a fast start for Marquette. I'm back into this one. It's an eight-point game now. Twenty-four sixteen, Providence on top, 7.39 left to go in the first half. Marquette Golden Eagles here in Providence. Chris Marquette's had some great NBA players through the years. Doc Rivers, the Celtics head coach, former Marquette Golden Eagle. Dwayne Wade, most recently, they had 50 players drafted by the NBA. And uh, Dwayne Wade, the fourth player to be drafted in the first round in the NBA out of Marquette. He stepped it up in a big way, didn't he, last yes, year, he leading Miami to the NBA championship. And He's now in the elite status, as he should be in the NBA. Long-range shot, in and out, and Hill on the rebound. He's been shooting well so far, 9 for 15 and 60 percent, and got 12 rebounds. So just six rebounds so far for Marquette. And low for the senior, Herbert Hill. Now the paint has really been the area where Providence has dominated. Get it down there, be effective in the, in, the, in the activity off the boards for Providence, helping them stay in the lead right now by 10. It was seven points so far for PC. Matthews squares it up, but the rebound for Hill. Remember, Hill has been big on the board so far for PC. McDermott loses the handle, James on the steal. Got Hayward with him, but it's all Dominic James. Got the foul, but can't get the roll. That's Dominic James at his best. There's a turnover by Providence where, again, we said they need to take good care of it. When they turn it over, forget about it with this man, Dominic James. So tough, he takes it right to the goal. He's crafty, quick, very tough to stop and contain in the open floor. Jeff McDermott picks up his second personal. Uh, Dominic James, the Big East Rookie of the Year last year. And into the game now for Marquette checking in. Barrow coming back into the game. And Jameel Lott as Burke will sit down and Hayward. Tom Crean and Marquette. Tom Crean is 1-0 all-time against Providence. Just the second time that he's been the head coach in this Marquette-Providence matchup. brings it up and an eight-point lead right now for the Friars. Williams around Kubion. Can't get it to go and the rebound comes away for Marquette. That time Matthews able to steal. Kubion back to Hayward. As James will take over, 22 seconds left on the shot clock. Marquette fresh off a 69-51 win over Savannah State as part of their non-conference schedule. And they kick off their Big East schedule here tonight against Providence. And low, he stepped on the line down low on the baseline and a turnover here for Marquette. Four turnovers for Marquette, seven so far for Providence College. Of course, Marquette this game with James and Matthews Two of the three highly touted backcourt members. We talked about Jarrell McNeil off the top and the sophomore guard injured in practice on Monday, not able to dress and play in this one. So clearly other guys needing to step up. James, Matthews, and company. Timeout here as Williams able to get the timeout. 
With 5.30 left to go in the first half and an eight-point Providence lead. Let's take a look at our Big East leaders brought to you by Hyundai. That's real... Terrell McNeil did not make the trip, as uh, we just heard from Ronnie. Paul Gauss on top. And the list of Big East leaders in steals. McNeil's been amazing. He's averaged 3.40 so far, and he's a guy that has 51 steals to lead the NCAA in his career. 14.5 points per game. And year high 25 points against Morgan State earlier this season. McNeil is sophomore guard. That's a huge loss for Marquette. No doubt about it. Their strength is in the backcourt and clearly struggling to shoot the ball in this ball game. Um, so Tom Crean's club, they've got to do a better job rebounding and, and get James to get a couple of shots to go because once he does that, some openings will present themselves for his teammates. He's a great, great penetrator. Twice this year, McNeil had had six steals in a game. Out of the lineup tonight for Marquette. Ollie off for Epijuku, off the front end. The rebound, Kubion has it stolen nicely by Epijuku. And McDermott quickly to Colley. Well, this McDermott has got the most assists on the team, and the big fella loves to dish the ball. He was an outstanding high school quarterback. He's got those kind of skills and vision on the basketball court. Six for Jonathan Colley. Vincella up high, off for James. Zone's done a nice job to neutralize James as he penetrates. Other people for Providence are stepping in to help out to make him give it up. Matthew's spinning, can't get it to go. The rebound taken away, but a turnover quickly and a pass from McKenzie into the game here for PC. Again, no rush. He's taken down the court. Kind of a four-point swing right there. James, a nice finish for Providence. Need to stay poised with the basketball. Six points for Dominic James. has been a quiet first half, but he's starting to make his presence felt. Inside for Hill, who got hit over the top. Nicely blocked, got only ball that time. McKenzie into the game for PC. Ryan McKenzie, a freshman from Brooklyn, New York. Out for Hill, posting up as he turns and gets it. Nice move by Herbert Hill. Very nice senior season that Hill is having. Averaging better than 50 in a game and seven boards. And how about that? 20-point, 20 20-rebound 20 game he had this year. Just outstanding. Nine points for Herbert Hill. Very tight, and Matthews with a nice play on the baseline to cut in. He's got nine points. Wesley Matthews. Oh, McDermott. Down low is foul. Actually, it's Colley who's fouled down low. 30 to 22, Providence on top. We step aside from the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> 30 to 22, Providence on top. 3:14 left to go in the first half. Let's check out the stats. First half here so far between PC and Marquette. Three-point field goals, Marquette with two, Providence with three. Two of those going to their freshman point guard, Dwayne Williams, who's got two. Maybe Epijuku with the other. Rebounds one side of Providence, 18 to seven. That's been a big key in the early going here for the Friars. That's been huge. The boards and taking care of the ball, and here's Dwayne Williams, who's been very helpful. The young freshman point guard handling the ball but the big people really take a charge inside oh tap not quite well, herbert hill got a hand on it but knocked it out of bounds that was there too i think if that pass had been a little bit more centered it was ready to go nice call by tim welsh out of the huddle now one of the victories this year as part of the 13 wins from Marquette was beating Duke 73 to 62. They did that in November, a big win for them. One of the biggest wins for PC was beating 23rd ranked Boston College earlier this year on November 22nd, one of their big wins at home. So PC, as you mentioned earlier, has played great basketball at home. Williams missing everything that time as the air ball on the three-point drive. 
It's a good shot that time, though. That time he's open, maybe too open. Sometimes you overthink it in that situation, but I thought that was a good look. It was there. Just didn't get it done. They hit the first two, has missed the last two. Matthews out high to Kinsella. Fitzgerald drops it down for James for three. Hits the front end. Lott on the rebound. Jameel Lott, St. Paul, Minnesota, six foot seven. Well, you want to finish up strong if you're Providence. It's suddenly a six-point game. Nice job by Marquette. They'd love to close the thing up and tighten it up for halftime. And for Providence, they played well. They seem to be out of sync right now. Herbert Hill had it taken away as they go down hard and the foul that time. Mostly Matthews on the foul that time. Two personals now for Matthews. Matthews had a career-high 22 points in the last game against Savannah State. Sends Herbert Hill to the line, who's 62% from the line. That is nine points in this one. And Tom Creed may take Matthews out as well with the two. Doesn't want to see him pick up the third. I think he's going to leave him in the game. But clearly, I mean, that might be partly with uh, McNeil out of the game to say, hey, stay out there and enough trust in him that he will not commit the third before the mission. Battles around, but in for Hill. Charles Birch coming back into the game here in a moment for PC, being waved back out again. Ten points, five rebounds for the senior Herbert Hill, making 11 points as he hits them both. Now Birch will come back into the game for PC, and Hill will step out. Eight-point Friars lead under two minutes left here in the first half. Done a nice job Providence has against James in this first half. The zone has really formed almost a double-team situation when he penetrates. Nice Inside pass. for Lott, who hits another one. He's hit a couple of buckets here in the last couple of minutes. Great penetration, though, again by James to set him up. And clearly the guy that keeps this offense rolling give credit to marquette they've closed the gap providence has really played you know played well early and now just a six point game i said that was a lot that was guzman barrow on the last basket there's a foul here away from the ball and it was guzman barrow from senegal Get that penetration though the white shirts go to james the bounce pass and Barrow, the team's leading rebounder with a good finish. It's just his first basket of the game. Providence done a pretty good job with the zone, especially in the interior in this first half. Rumor can't get it to go, and out of bounds, PC will keep it. Six-point Providence College lead. McDermott looking to inbound. Williams again for three, and he hits. After missing two in a row, gets his third three-pointer of the game. He's got 11 points here in the first half for PC. How about the confidence to take that shot? Last one didn't catch iron. The kid's got a lot of confidence. He's really stepped it up in this first half. Ruby on for James. A different looking Marquette team without Jarrell McNeil. Long range shot, Kubion. Rebound down low and going down hard was McDermott, a foul underneath. And it'll go the other way as the Friars will send Colley to the line. Colley got dumped on the play. One and one here for Colley. That was a 82% shooter from the line. And gets the front end with a one and one. Another solid effort by Colley. So the front line, Colley, Herbert Hill, 
contributions from McDermott and a big frontline presence, the boards, etc. cetera, and, and Colley, really nice job with the starting nod tonight. Thirty seconds left here in the first half. Kubion lost the handle, but it'll stay on the Marquette end of things. A touch McDermott last on the way out of bounds. Well, a chance moments ago for Marquette to get this to be perhaps a tie game at halftime, and Providence at least to end this first half answering the surge. You'll see if they can get a stop here. About a four-second differential with game and shot clock. Big possession for Marquette. See if they can get it done. Kinsella and Matthews back in here for Marquette. James and Kubion playing passes. James now. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Cuts in and hits off the glass. Dominic James, who's got himself eight points here in the first half, starting to heat it up. And a traveling violation. Marquette will get it back. Big basket by James. And again, there's the, you know, kind of the inexperience factor right there for Providence to come down and get a shot. Want to get the ball here, I would think, to James and just let him penetrate to see if he can create something before the buzzer. 3.9 seconds left to go here in the half. He'll try to do it quickly. Kubion with the pass. Kinsella tried to get it to James. McDermott steals with one second left. It would have counted, but it doesn't go. So the nice steal and the good first half for Providence College as they'll salute him here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Providence has been 7-1 and one when leading at the half. And a very good first half for Herbert Hill. The Providence College Friars Hill with 11 points. And the Friars with 37 as they lead 37-28. And a great start to the Big East schedule for Providence College. 37-28, Providence on top here at halftime. Providence has played great bas basketball at home, and they continue to do so here tonight against Marquette. A very good fast first half for PC. Yeah, they opened up quickly. They really did a good job with the boards, got the ball inside very effectively in the first half, and took charge early. Dwayne Williams also with a very good first half, stepping in for Sherrod Curry, doing so very nicely. Did a nice job. I thought that was the key, that the backcourt handled the pressure well in this game, and they just got off to such a good start. Hill inside. Dwayne Williams, an excellent first half. Third game in a row now. Double figures. He's already got 11. Jonathan Colley got the start. Big front line for Providence. They performed very well. Rebound and finish. And for Marquette at the other end, made some shots, but really struggled throughout most of the first half. Matthews did a good job outside and in. Dominic James, for the most part, held in check. Made this beautiful jumper right before halftime. He needs to take more shots. The zone's been effective, James. He'll need to try to find more openings in the second half. Look at the numbers from the first half. Field goals, Providence 54% so far, and three-pointers, four for seven. Williams has got three of those there, freshman point guard. Providence College with a 37-28 lead at halftime. We're back with the second half and more after this from the dunk. Halftime from the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Let's check in with Shauna Hassett. Shauna? Hi, guys. I'm here with head coach Tim Welsh. Tim, you've been very effective on the board. Did you make any adjustments at halftime? Uh, just, you know, make sure we contain the dribble penetration. They've been tough with their, their guards. James hurt us a breakdown a little bit. we got to make sure we continue to work on the backboards. And you've been effective also with the zone and Dwayne Williams setting that up. Yeah, we're going to keep playing the zone, but we have to be ready to switch to man but, and run, keep running good offense. All right, great. Good luck. Thanks. Back to you, Don. All right, Shauna, thanks very much. That's one thing we saw a lot of in that first half was zone for PC. Very effective. I think they'll stay with it. What it did was contain up top Dominic James in the half-court set and really forced, you know, him into some tough shots as you look at the, you know, guards are the really the scoring threat for Marquette, 20 out of the 28. And for Providence, the opposite. They get more production inside, although better balance for Providence and why they're up in this ballgame. Well, for Marquette, nine points in the first half for Wesley Matthews. He leads them in scoring for Providence College, Herbert Hill, and the point guard, Dwayne Williams, both of 11 in the first half. So a very good first half for the senior and for the freshman for Providence College. And uh, all of it working out very well for PC. Very good first half for the Friars. Marquette, though, close to six. They're going to keep coming at the Friars in the second half. I think Tom Green may go a little bit more pressure 
in the second half. Try to see if they can open the game up a little bit in the half-court set. Providence's size a real problem for Marquette. Marquette has never led in this game. The largest lead was 12 for Providence College. Into the nine-minute mark of the first half. Well, McDermott really helps out a lot forward, but he comes up top. And Oh, nice block on that one. He'll reject it by a lot that time. He's able to keep it. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Jonathan Colley. Low pass and the foul. As Herbert Hill can't get the bucket but gets fouled. Second and third chance there for Providence as they you know, continue to do a good job to get rebounds, loose balls, and work it inside. But their big people did a great job that time keeping it alive. You know, Colley can handle it. Nice little dish. Couple of no calls. Some bodies flying, and we've got a little physical play to start the second half. Guzman Barrow on the foul, his first personal. This hill has been great at the line tonight. He's got 12 overall points. Four for five from the line. I did it this time. I jinxed him, and he's now <laughs> four for six from the line. Been consistent this year, has he scoring, rebounding. Herbert Hill really, really turning in a nice year. A low for Barrow, trying to kick it back out, lose the handle. Not gets it back. James to Kubion, who walks. Tried to do too much, was going to shoot, then pass, ended up taking the extra steps. Can't overthink it sometimes. A little, you get that ball, just let it go right here. Boom, shoot it. Once he started to think about it, and I guess the defense helped out a little bit there, but you got to just catch and shoot sometimes. Don't hesitate. Got the Juku with Kubion on him, twisting and turning. The pass for Colley. Lost the handle, couldn't get a good shot off at the side. And Efajuku now has it stolen. Hill for McDermott. <laughs> We're posting up, and that time a foul. Let's check back in with Shauna Hassett. Shauna. Hi, guys. Well, we have an update on the Jarrell McNeil situation. We just learned from the sports information people that he had a con he has a concussion. Uh, he and Matthews apparently banged heads in practice on Monday, and now he's out for this game, and it's undetermined how many others due to this concussion. Back to you guys. Well, pretty serious thing there for Marquette. Certainly a huge loss for them not to have McNeil in the lineup. Well, that's that trio out there with with James and Matthews and McNeil. Nice dish right there by James. So that means James really more and more in this second half needs to take charge and take the game over for Marquette. Four points now for Lott. Led the team in blocks last year. Missed three games earlier this season. He's from St. Paul, Minnesota. Good Hill back for Colley from the free throw line. Can't get it to go on the rebound taken by Marquette. Eight point lead for Providence. Long range and knocked away. Back out to Kubion. To the corner. Matthews tries it. The rebound down low for Barrow. And he's fouled on the way back up. Like Marquette doing a nice job. Hanging around. They continue to work hard. That's the way you get yourself back in the ball game. Number Hill on the foul. His first personal. He's on Barrow to the line. Roberts has really done a nice job, as you see, Barrow's numbers to limit Marquette for the most part tonight to one shot. So free throws haven't been a big factor for Marquette either. They've had a hard time getting second chance baskets and rebounds here this evening. he has been 64% from the line this season. And a career high 21 points earlier this year against Northwestern State. Able to hit them both. Six-point Friars lead, Dwayne Williams. There's their 10-1 and one at home, their lone loss coming to Brown. They lost 51-41 to 41 in mid-November. As a foul down low that time, Colley trying to cut to the basket. Nice pass inside. The big people done a nice job with some interior passing in this game. That time, Hill to Colley. Dominic James picking up his second personal. Eight points for Colley, making nine. So he hits the first one. 
Well, he's been three for three from the line so far. In and out of the rebound, nicely done by McDermott for Hill, but he took steps before the traveling violation. Maybe too many passes there. I think McDermott with that big rebound go up strong. You know, it's been an unselfish look, but when you're in under the basket, power it right back up there. The shuffle, good call that time as Hill walked with the basketball. Seven to six of turnovers. Seven to 11 turnovers so far in this one. Kubion up top for James. Cutting in is Matthews. And Marquette starting to heat it up. Really didn't have a lot of success. Field goal percentage in the first half. They're starting to feel it here in the second half. That's 11 points now for Wesley Matthews. Keith Marquette, though, will be getting some stops on defense. Providence did a pretty nice job getting it inside. Nice pass there. We go inside again, and a knee that time, and a foul. As McDermott was down there alone and had been double teamed. Nice job. Matthews has been consistent offensively, getting a lot of his looks from Dominic James, able to fill it up. You can see his confidence building at 22 the last time out. Double figure score for Marquette. He is there again tonight. Usman Barrow getting another foul, his third of the second half. He's picked him up here in a hurry. Not yet four minutes into the second half. He's got three personals. They get the roll that time to the Friars. And regain a seven-point lead. Stepped around, can't get the roll, and it'll go the other way. Kubion <laughs> coming out of the game now for Marquette. 16-23 left to go here in the second half. And a personal foul that time on Birch. Picks up his first. Williams up the floor here for PC. He's done a pretty good job. You know, he's brought the ball up, not trying to do too much. McDermott's been very helpful with the ball. Nice look. Herbert Hill. Check out the way McDermott comes to the ball. Really plays like a point forward type position and he comes up. The penetration, the dish, he really gives you another point person on the floor with his passing ability. Dermott with seven assists. Done a very nice job of delving it off here tonight. Fires on top here by nine. Four minutes into the second half, and Matthews travels. Timeout on the floor. Providence College on top, 43-34, 15-58 left in the second half. 43-34, Providence on top here in the second half, and the senior for Providence, Herbert Hill, has been big in this one for the Friars. He really has. He's a presence out there. He's got, you know, just good low post moves. He can finish. He's in good places. He's very experienced, and he's delivering. He's come up with some big buckets for the Friars in this one. He's rebounding. Done a nice job getting him the ball. Rebounding, inside play, points to the paint have really been keys for the Friars here tonight. You see he's right on track with his season average with a lot of time to go. Second of the team in scoring coming into tonight's action. It's five for nine from the field. And Herbert Hill doing a great job on the floor right now for PC. They've got the ball and on top by nine. Largest lead of 12 earlier in the first half tonight for the Friars. McDermott thought about it. Now well, lose the handle for the moment. Gets it back. McDermott to Hill. Back to McDermott in tight. And the lost ball that time. If they call three, three, three seconds in the paint. The camping out. Big turn turnover Hill. here for BC. Hill was down there a long time. Get that call. You've really got to pretty much hang out in the paint. 
Doesn't get called a lot. Good look. Marquette needs to do more of that. Get it inside. Go right at Providence's front line. Get some free throws. And I wouldn't be surprised second half here to see Tom Green's club put a little pressure on Providence as well to make Williams handle the ball to neutralize some of the bigger people. Jonathan Colley picking up his first personal. And a foul here quickly again, PC. Again, maybe Epijuku that time on the reach in. And Epijuku picking up his first. So two quick personals here for the Friars. Matthews has it picked and getting it back is James loses it again. Well, Dwayne Williams in some sloppy play here. Both sides steps up and shoots again, missing off the back side, and it'll stay down on the other end. Here's getting it back here. McDermott will be inbounding. Get another big lineup out there. It's really been consistently big for the Friars. Hill, McDermott, Holly, Efajuku at 6-5, and then you've got Williams. Williams done a solid job bringing it up, and he's had a lot of help from McDermott in the half-court set. McDermott off for Colley, and it's going the other way. An offensive foul. Nice pass again. It's a good call. Colley really lowered the shoulder. A little bit of cameo, maybe. All right. But the shoulder was lowered and went in hard. Second personal for Colley. 15 to 31 for the Friars, 48% from the field. Let's take a look at our select stats brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. And look at the field goal percentage. Corner for Fitzgerald, the rebound for Epijuku. NPC with the ball back. Both teams right now having trouble scoring as Epijuku cuts in. McDermott twisting and turning for Hill. Now a nice dish by McDermott finding people. He's done a great job. 16 for Hill is Fitzgerald. Yes, he does. Yeah, Fitzgerald started his first game of the year back against Delaware. He started a couple games. Big six foot nine forward, a transfer from Tulane. Going by Matthews, who brings it back himself, coast to coast, and the bucket. Nice exchange right there for Marquette. They keep hanging around, down seven with some good defense. That's how you get yourself back in a ball game. Matthews with 13, but the foul as cutting in that time after Juku was fouled. Quick transition right there for Marquette Golden Eagles that time down the floor quickly. Now 16 in the game for Wesley Matthews. Pajuka 78% from the line to get a chance here. As Dominic James sits down. He's not been sitting down much in this contest, but he does for the moment. The trainer alongside. Looks like he got banged up a little bit as he limped off a little bit, but he seems to be regrouping the left knee, perhaps banged it. You see Dominic back out there. A lot of time to go in this game. Fajuku is six points. They get seven as he hits them both. Maybe in his sophomore year. And stepping up big here in the absence of Sherrod Curry. And this has Dwayne Williams in the point guard spot. But it's very young. Last year is 5-11 and 11 in Big East competition. They're coming back this year. A lot of sophomores, but playing very maturely as this one is off of Hall and goes out of bounds. It'll stay Marquette basketball down their end of the floor. You see his average over 80 points a game, 80.5 per game this season. And, of course, Curry out, he averages 17 points a game. Big loss for the Friars. He's really was playing well through the first 11 games, but in this particular game, you know, other guys doing a good job, which is what you need if you're, you know, one of the Friars. And the key guy, of course, has been, you know, the freshman Williams bringing it up. All in the foul, he picks up his second personal. Hey, 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 don't steal you, 
Marquette. Yeah, Marquette basketball here being battled by David Kubion. Fitzgerald up top. Marquette's got good looks here tonight against the zone, but has really just really struggled to find the range from three-point territory. He hasn't consistently got it inside. Oh, nice steal. Wayne Williams on the steal. You can't lob that cross-court pass like that. You've got to zip the ball, penetrate. And Pajuku with a nice pump fake. Gets it. And the elevate, stepped around and hits. Nine for Wavy at Pajuku. And the Dunkin' Donuts Center alive. An 11-point Friars lead with 12.50 left in the second half. Prominence on top of this one. 12.50 left to go in the second half. Friars without Sherrod Curry, and it has been a huge season so far for Sherrod Curry. Now, look at him. He's, you know, he's leading the team in uh, minutes, assists. He's an outstanding foul shooter, which you love to have from your point guard in the 17 a game, leading the team. Violation of team rules out tonight. But other teammates have responded well in a very tough initial test with Marquette. Still plenty of time here in this ballgame, but the zone and Providence's front line and size have been the keys. Long range shot. James hits. Dominic James acquired first half by his standards. He's got 11 points in the contest. And a big three right there for Marquette to get him back within eight. That's just the third three that Marquette has been able to make tonight in 17 attempts, so they have struggled against the zone. Golden Eagles have never led. Ray Hall with his first bucket of the contest. Hall, a couple of personals, but picks up his first basket, and it's a 10-point Friars lead. Excellent interior passing by the Providence front court here tonight, and a lot of people getting into the act. James trying another three, this time off the front end, and Efejuku on the rebound. Quickly up the floor for Birch. Not enough. Hall trying to gather it. He does. Big strong Ray Hall and a travel. The timeout on the floor, a 10-point Providence Friars lead on top. 51-41 from the Dunkin' Donuts Center. 10-point Friars lead. Here's an advanced look at upcoming games brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. For the best parts, people and price were ready in advance. For Marquette, they will be matched up on Sunday against Syracuse, and then they'll take on Connecticut. Well, the Providence College Friars will be at home again to take on Seton Hall on Saturday, and then travel to Louisville. Last year, the Cardinals came here to the Dunkin' Donuts Center. This year, the Friars are heading to Louisville, and then uh, Seton Hall once again as the Big East schedule is underway beginning tonight. Oh, there just isn't a breather, you know, when you look at game after game, every one will be a tester for these clubs. Eight teams from the Big East earned bids last year to the tournament. And they'll be looking to do the same again this year. As this year picked 10th in the preseason bowl are the Friars. In the Big East beginning tonight against Marquette. It's been a great start, a 10-point lead right now for the Friars. Who's thought about it, pulls it back out again. You really want to get off to a good start in league play. And, and home court advantage so important in this league. Got to play well at home, as Providence is doing tonight for Marquette. She needs to work. Oh, nice look. The slam for Herbert Hill, who's got 18 points. Crowd, a little bit involved. They love the slam dunk. Herbert Hill really turning in a very solid performance tonight. Ties the largest lead of the night for the Friars. A 12-point lead now for Providence. Matthews down low for Hayward. He was fouled by McDermott. No call. And in and out again. Hill on the rebound. And they tie it up. Possession arrow going the other way. Marquette will get the ball back. 
and set it to Shauna Hassett. Shauna? Hi, guys. I'm here now with Danny Ainge, who made the trip down from Boston for this game. Are you here looking at anyone in particular? No, I'm just here to watch the game, just to scout all the players. Big East opener, big game for that? Yeah, this is a fun game. I like this. It's very intense. Providence's inside game is dominating. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Danny. Right. Back to you guys, Don. All right, Shauna, thanks very much. Always looking at uh, Big East talent for sure. A lot of talent coming out of uh, these programs in the Big East, that's for sure. Absolutely. I think uh, you got this game pretty much uh, down the street for Danny Ace from Boston down to Providence, Big East. And must have a healthy curiosity about, you know, Dominic James, who has really done a nice job for Marquette, the Big East Rookie of the Year a year ago. And the foul here away from the ball. Go the other way. Screening foul that time. Kinsella doing too much with the with the block. And certainly, I bet Herbert Hill has probably made an impression on Danny Ainge tonight with his low post moves and presence inside. The big, big man at, at 6'10 in there for Providence. Well, we heard earlier Herbert Hill working uh, during the summer with Ryan Gomes, who's done well for the Celtics as well. And a chance to play some NBA players. Good side, nice move, and McDermott counted. And one for McDermott. What a floor game McDermott has played as well. The ball handling, the penetration. He's really been a like a quarterback out there, which was his strength in high school. Look at that move, the big fella. In the end of the ball, plays with emotion. Kinsella. Really got a great presence on the floor. Kinsella, another personal. It's his third. It's the largest lead right now of the night for the Friars. Marquette has never had a lead. And a 15-point lead now for Providence. Seven points for Jeff McDermott, who completes the three-point play. Marquette's had a very hard time against his zone to establish any kind of inside game here tonight. Barrow's really been shut down inside. It's been tough to get anything going consistently down low. Kubion. The right hand has it knocked away. McDermott steals. Back come the Friars. Birch. Herbert Hill gets hit in the head that time and the foul. And he went down hard. Almost looked like Hill had spun by Fitzgerald and came back to him and caught the elbow inadvertent. Looks like he kept going. He was going to go right by Fitzgerald. Came back. There's the reach in the contact. Backhanded by Fitzgerald. Yeah. And his second personal for Fitzgerald since Herbert Hill back to the line. Averages 15.5 points per game. A total of 18 so far as he misses the first one. Oh, Wilson Colley coming back into the game for PC as Birch steps up. Marquette coming into the game 15th rank ranked by the AP and 21st by the coaches poll. So big home, big East opener for Providence. And the last win in a Big East opener for Providence College was against Boston College back in 2003. And a quick foul here and a foul that time on Wamey up at Juku. His second personal. Team sixth. 11 minutes into the second half and the largest lead of the night for the Friars. Mentioned Ryan Gomes gone. He's really done a nice job, hasn't he? Fitting in with the Celts. Yeah. Second round pick. Knows how to play the game. Long range shot, and Fitzgerald able to hit three point land. There's five points of the game now for Dan Fitzgerald out of St. Paul, Minnesota. And with the three point shot, you know, these games in college basketball, the 19 foot, 9 inch line, never over. You can get going in a hurry with them, put some pressure on. Points can be made up in a hurry. Holly kicks it out. Williams from the corner. And the rebound is McDermott. Having a great second half. All over the floor. Always seems to be around the basketball. Great follow-up. Nine for the sophomore McDermott. Dominic James. Kubion.
12 on the shot clock. James will let it fly from three. Rattles out. Fitzgerald kicks it back over to the bench. It'll stay on the Marquette end of the court. McDermott disagrees. Jeff McDermott having a great second half. So are the Friars. Fifty-eight forty-four. the Providence College Friars on top here with lots of time left in the second half. Check out the game tracker here. First half, uh, very good for the Friars, and they uh, picked it up here in the second half, and McDermott has been red hot in the second half. Been all around the basketball. He's handled the ball well. Herbert Hill, very, very solid ball game. Collie has been outstanding as well. The front line has really performed well. Big front line for Providence. The question coming in, Dwayne Williams handling pressure. And I think he's really answered that bell very well with a solid ball game himself. Dwayne Biggie, his third consecutive start. Sherrod Curry out of the lineup. And really a huge loss for the Friars. And Sherrod Curry, no word as to when he'll be back, violating team rules. 44 points, though, with 7.50 to go. It's been a struggle for Marquette to score in this game. They haven't been able to break because they haven't really been able to rebound consistently. In and out, Barrow on the rebound. One of the few put-back hoops for Marquette in this game. They need more of that down the stretch. Some hot three-point shooting. Barrow four points, connecting that time on the put-back. Juku thought about it, now cuts to the paint, down low for Herbert Hill, battles it up, but not in. He's good on the far side, but he stepped on the line that time. Barrow, going to save it for Marquette, but the Friars get it back here, McDermott will be inbounding. Low for McDermott, back out for Epijuku, long range. Rebound taken by the Golden Eagles and Blake James. Good job by Providence in this game. Back on defense, not allowing Marquette to get out and just run. Half court set. Really foul down low that time. Let's have uh, Jonathan Colley. Third personal for Colley. And it'll send Darrow to the line. He's had a couple of double-doubles this year. Leads the team in rebounding from the Senegal. Getting a little bit more involved in the offense. In the second half, you can see Providence's domination on the boards. 64% from the line is Barrow. This is the first one. Holly will come out. Ray Hall checks back in here for the Friars. Six foot ten, 245 pounds. Last year played in all 31 games, starting 14 of them. As the team's only double double. 10 points, 13 rebounds against Valparaiso earlier this season. And on the floor is Herbert Hill. It connects short range. Yeah, bodies flying everywhere. A foul. The other way here is the foul this time. It's committed by Wamey Epijuku, who picks up his third personal. A couple of quick ones for Wamey. One on one is one. Great team foul, I should say. Free throws will play a role down the stretch, but particularly with six and a half to go. I think we're going to see some reaching in, some some banging, but you've got to capitalize if you're down. Oh, is killed him at the line, two for five. That goes out of bounds. And the Friars will get it back again. On top by 12, 627 left to go. The pressure by Marquette, almost a back four. Very two, close. It really was, you know, with the foot on the line, a 2-2-1. We'll see more of that by Marquette to see if they can open the game up a bit, force Providence into turnovers. 
Ball loses the handle. Onto the floor he goes. Still loose. Back to Williams. And the Friars hold on. They got 10 seconds on the shot clock. And they're trying to get Williams' attention. And now he will head down the lane. Little runner. The rebound in and out. And that time a foul. I think they might be saying that Hill interfered with that ball over the cylinder. You're right. Absolutely correct. Offensive interference. He's rattling around. Hill went up to get it. There's a time running out on the shot clock. That's a good call. That ball cannot be interfered with if it's if it's above that cylinder on or above it. It clearly was. Then we got to enjoy that particular violation. You have to feel it jump up over the rim to do that. There is enjoyment in that violation, I imagine. <laughs> nice finish. <laughs> Five and a half minutes left to go here in the second half. A 10-point Friars lead. Marquette starting to get back into it here again. Nice follow by Hayward. And gotta love Tom Creed's club. They keep battling. You know, Tim Welsh gotta be pleased with the way his team has played, but it's a 40-minute game. Another strip. Got the numbers. Kubion has it blocked by Epijuco. Hall on a block, but he may have fouled him in the process. Momentum changing here late in the second half. You really don't want to dribble it there if you're Ray Hall. Catch it and dish it. Oh, a huge play by Efajuku. Marquette had great numbers here, but it didn't set up nicely with, you know, getting the ball to the middle with the wings filled up. They, they absolutely needed to come away with something on that. Good hustle by Hayward with the board. Hayward's got seven points, 57%. Free throw shooter, and he hits the first one. Czar Hayward from Buffalo, New York. And Marquette and rebounding over the last three or four games for Marquette. Able to get them both. Key free throws here for the Golden Eagles. We trail by eight. Really pressing a little bit more here as McDermott tries to get it across the line. He does. And the Friars able to set it up. McDermott turns around and misses, gets dunked. Herbert Hill gets the rebound. Hill in tight, pass to nowhere, and it'll be touched last by a Golden Eagle, and the Friars will keep it. Tim Welsh wants a timeout. He gets one with 4.41 left to go in the second half. The Friars will talk it over. They've got an eight-point lead at one point and a 15-point lead. But the Golden Eagles starting to get back into this one and momentum shifting. The Dunkin' Donuts sound a little quieter over the last minute or so. Well, some nice adjustments. The coach is working hard throughout this game. The Providence zone effective throughout. We thought we'd see some more pressure from Marquette deeper into this game, and we are seeing it. And they have definitely turned up their intensity level on defense, which is keen this run, forcing a few turnovers. Well, look at the coaches poll, top 25. UCLA still on top, and really a lot of balance. Up Pittsburgh, number 10 from the Big East Conference. Connecticut at 14. Connecticut was running the table until they went to West Virginia, which was awfully tough and top to bottom, awfully tough. And then there's Marquette at number 21 in the coaches' poll. They're 15 in the AP. There's Notre Dame. Again, that's that balance we talked about. Long range, Wamey Epijuku, the three-pointer from the corner. Big one for the Friars right after the timeout. Worked out great. Nice call, Tim Welsh setting it up, saying Wamey. Step in there, your option A, option B, get it inside, he drains it. Big basket. 12 for Epijuku. Something about being up double figures that's that's big, particularly this late in the game. Hayward gets it stripped, Dwayne Williams the other way for the Priors gets it stolen from behind. See, that's where you're facing. Three defenders back for Marquette. Don't rush it. Bring it out, work the clock. You're getting deep into this ball game. It's Gerald for three. Off the front end, McDermott battles down low. Off of McDermott, it's going the other way. And a foul down low. 
61-50, the Friars on top by 11 from the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Sixty-one fifty, the Friars on top by eleven. Three fifty-seven left to go in the second half. And another Big East action. Pittsburgh tenth and beating Syracuse seventy-four sixty-six. And a big victory there for Pittsburgh. That was a tight, tough game. You could we were getting scores throughout, but Pitt with very good ball early in this season. Number ten in the coaches' poll as we saw moments ago. Dermott misses the first one. Dermott with nine points in the contest for the Friars. And a very good second half. Six foot seven sophomore from New Rochelle, New Jersey. Going to get the second one. It's a 12 point lead for the Friars. 10 points, 10 assists, eight rebounds for McDermott. There he is again. Had that triple double, which is a rare, rare thing to do in basketball against Harvard. He's closing in on one here with a great all-around effort for the Friars. Matthews turns and gets blocked by Herbert Hill. Now the lead pass for Hill. The jam for Hill! <laughs> Saw that one coming. 20 points for Herbert Hill. A 14-point lead for the Providence College Friars. And a huge game for the senior, Herbert Hill. Let's take a look now at our Red Lobster nothing but net shot of the game. Well, a defense keys good offense. And <laughs> the crowd was waiting for this one. Defensive pressure, and it's Hill. Check it out if you're watching this ball game. Defense, he makes the play at both ends and then finishes with authority. That is a thunder jam. He blocks the shot, and there's the hustle leading the way down the floor. Get it to him. That's big time right there. What an effort by Hill. Getting it done there at both ends of the floor. A lot of style points on that one as well. Great 20, numbers. 20 points, eight rebounds, eight for 15 from the field. Led the nation in field goal percentage at 73%. Down low, Fitzgerald fouled and the bucket. So Fitzgerald that time getting the contact. And it quiets the crowd here momentarily. Herbert Hill, 73% floor coming in. Good effort by Marquette here, though. Dan Fitzgerald just keeps banging away in there and he gets the finish. Foul on Epijuku picks up his fourth personal. Gerald completes the three-point play. He's got eight. Pressure by Marquette. We've seen some of this, but they just have not shot the ball consistently to set the pressure up. Dermott, nice touch pass for Herbert Hill. Dermott's been just awesome for the Friars. Breaking pressure, passing, all-around game. Exceptional. 22 for Hill. The rebound comes away. Epichuku, to take it himself, goes to coast, but got a race back now as he misses the mark. And again, you need to take charge, guy. Now you're inside three minutes, up double figures. That's Ben Curry. Now see if Providence can settle it when they bring it down. Good hustle again by Tom Creed's club. Look at this now by McDermott catches. Boom, touch. Just never puts it down. His head's always up. Really does play like a, a point guard out there with a power forwards body. Yeah, Jeff McDermott, six foot seven. And uh, sophomore. Does remind me of Gomes. You know, Gomes played big. You know, and he continues to play big in the pros because he works hard. He's got great position out there. And McDermott does the same thing. He plays a lot bigger than 6'7". At the same time, an outstanding guy with the ball. He's really played a big role getting the ball up the floor tonight and passing it. Hayward hits the ball. He's got 10 in the game. Full court man to man. And there he is again now bringing the ball up the court. He's done a great job. Really helped out the freshman Dwayne Williams here tonight. The 
Juku foul by Fitzgerald. Got to get slapped on the wrist as he did. Third personal for Fitzgerald. That's what you want to do if you're Providence now. Work the clock, force Marquette out, force Marquette to reach, and stop the clock. And this is where your free throws will enable you to put a game away, but you've got to get the job done. And for Juku with two shots. on Herbert Hill here apparently may have a cut on his hand. And we'll take care of the blood. Herbert Hill coming back in. The brief delay there and Efajuku will now take his foul shots. 12 points, 10 rebounds. And Wamey's 4 for 4 from the line tonight. Make it 5 for 5. <laughs> Earl comes out of the game, checking in, Lawrence Blackledge. Fifteen points for Efejuku. Thirteen-point lead for the Friars. Kubion. Fitzgerald splits it down low, and it's stripped nicely. Hill may have gotten a handle on that as well. And it'll stay down on the Marquette end. And 68 55 now. Friars on top. Under two minutes left to go. Hayward with the ball. Well, I think tonight with McNeil out and with James held in check. In the inside game, tough to get going against Providence. It's really been a solid effort by the Friars. Let's take a look at tonight's Pontiac game-changing performance. Lost to Herbert Hill. Been awesome. He's really played well. He's made big shots. He's defended. He's blocked him. He's rebounded. Terrific all-around effort. There's the... <laughs> That's a game-changer right there, that dunk. And how about that one? Beautiful passes. Well, the assist by Providence have been effective tonight as well. Hayward's got 11 in the game as he hits the first one here for the Golden Eagles. Seven for seven from the line. Yeah, Hayward's really worked hard off the glass here tonight. Providence with that big front line, they've been effective. His pressure now by Marquette. I think at this point, tough. They'll reach this time. I'm not sure they'll do that each time down the floor right now. We'll have to see. They're going to need some threes. We're at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Don Orsillo along with Ron Perry and Shauna Hassett. It's the 21st-ranked Marquette Golden Eagles and the Providence College Friars. And it has been a pretty impressive performance tonight for the Providence College Friars. Herbert headed to the line with an 11-point lead. Providence has been impressive rebounding. They've out-rebounded the opponent 11 of 13 games this season. And out-rebounding 40 to 26 in this one. So they will have done it again now 12 of 14 games on the season for the Friars. Very strong up front. Terrific all-around effort by McDermott. <laughs> Holding in on that triple double here tonight. He's got 11 points, 11 assists, 9 rebounds. Matthews kicked it away himself, and the Friars will get it back. The stat that it's, it's interesting with McDermott is the 11 assists from the forward slot, but he plays up a lot. Really played a key role handling the basketball here tonight. Turner will inbound it here for the Friars. And quickly now is Septajuku will bring it up. James on him, the reach around and the foul. So if Juku is fouled that time, he'll go to the line here for the Friars. Juku with 14 points in this one for the Friars. 
Pajuka at one point in the last game against Longwood as part of their 107-69 win at three straight three-pointers. We'll get this one to rattle in. Seven for seven of the line tonight is Wayne Bia Pajuku. The other thing Providence has done, you know, throughout much of the season, got good balanced scoring, and they were able to get that here again tonight. I think the start of this game is really important for Providence, and it's been tough for Marquette to catch up all night, and, and, and James's shot from the outside has been off. Edward sends it up. Edward Hill comes down with it. He gets fouled. And then Herbert Hill will head to the line as the Dunkin' Donuts Center salutes the Friars and Hill. time the Friars won a Big East opener back in 2003 and a great opener here tonight against Marquette Ooh, 23 points nine rebounds and Tim Welsh got to be happy with the effort here tonight absolutely I think he's got to be pleased is the defensive scheme worked very well he will keep it nicely in the game and I think the big thing was with Curry out, Williams was solid, and McDermott really helped against the, you know, the defense that Mark set up with the great passes. And this time, Hill on the foul. As Wesley Matthews was going back up, was fouled here. Under a minute left to go. Good hustle right to the finish in this ball game. With Body foul looked like McDermott. Kind of lead a little. <laughs> Felt he held his ground. <laughs> Two shots here for Matthews. He misses the first one. Usually Matthews. 13 points in this one had a career high 22 points against Savannah State in the last game for Marquette. The last warm up getting ready for Big East action. It's the second one. Inbounded here. And if a Juku finds Birch up ahead. I don't think if you're Marquette, you keep reaching in at this point. It's a 14 point game for Providence. Just work the clock, move the basketball. Wayne Williams doing a fine job in the absence of Sherrod Curry tonight. Thought he really did a nice job, particularly in the first half. Poised, moved the ball, made some shots. Three three-pointers and 11 points for Dwayne Williams with Gerald fouling after Juku, and he will go to the line. Four now for Fitzgerald. Tough to resist that temptation, but not much point in fouling. You're inside a minute, and... Uh, Time working against you. Four Big East teams in the top 25 as you look at the breakdown by conference. And as I mentioned, eight teams for the Big East earned bids last year to the tournament. Uh, expecting a very strong field once again this year. Fires, of course, not going to the Big East tournament last year. A lot of people picking them to get back into the tournament once again. They were picking the preseason poll for 10th. There's 12 teams go. The long range shot and the foul. And that'll be three shots from outside the foul line. Well, that's really ill-advised, yes. as, as you might say. Or <laughs> coach might say it differently than that. No reason to foul at this point. You want to put a game away, play it like you're in a two-point game and execute. Do a good job at both ends. And Dominic James held below his season average tonight. The zone bothersome to him. And do a good job to pick him up. A lot of screening for James up top, but every time he looked to penetrate, Providence did a nice job to make him give the ball up. It didn't allow them to get out and play a lot of transition basketball here tonight. Hey, 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 seconds left to go, third shot. And the miss. Rebound, Friars take it at the Juku. This Dunkin' Donuts Center crowd will salute the Friars. They won their first Big East game of the year starting off this year with a victory against the Marquette Golden Eagles. Dermott will just let the clock run out and the Friars have taken their first game of the year. An impressive effort for Tim Welsh's squad. 
And a nice victory for the Friars, 74 to 59. And the really played well, opened up well. It did the things they had to do in the trenches, controlled the boards, did a good job in the paint. Hill, outstanding. McDermott, terrific round game, great balance. It just took charge of this game early and never let up. Once again, our final score is 74 to 59 for Ron Perry and the entire ESPN Plus crew. I'm Don Orsillo. Tune in Saturday as Notre Dame battles Georgetown and DePaul battles Villanova. This has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.